What is up nerds? Cloud here with my first part of a 15 part video at minimum of what I'm referring to as the Final Fantasy Gauntlet playthrough. So, in this playthrough, I am playing through Final Fantasy 1 through at least 15, excluding 11 and 14 for obvious reasons. There's a few caveats to it. I will be playing through tactics and I will be playing through games like Dirge of Cerberus and Crisis Core that don't have numbers, but they follow a story. I will not be playing Tactics Advance or Tactics Advance 2 or Mystic Quest. So those are some of the asterisks, but the intent of this is to play through all the games. I've considered myself to be a huge Final Fantasy fan, but I cannot confidently say I remember playing through and beating all the Final Fantasy. So what better time than now? Going forward, uh, these are just like a reminisce kind of video, not necessarily a review, uh, more like a recap. It's just it's just a fun little thing that I want to do to to capture these times that I've played through these games. Uh, on the mic, we got your boy JD. Hello. JD I'm is here to uh, <laughs> JD is here to uh, help facilitate my mind in talking about these games. Uh, JD's been as you guys know, the BFF since birth uh, at this point. So uh, JD's very knowledgeable in a lot of games. He's also a huge Final Fantasy fan, been in the stream. So uh, just a back and forth. So how these are going to go, again, going forward, I probably won't explain it too much. But how these are going to go going forward is I just want to recap. I want to talk about what happened. I want to talk about what the game, how the game made me feel, what it did to me. Uh, that being said, we're going to jump right into how Final Fantasy 1 starts. So... Uh, Final Fantasy uh, also became known as Final Fantasy 1 after it uh, became a re-release. Uh, obviously, for anyone that hasn't played an RPG, it's a role-playing game uh, developed by Square that was released in December of 1987 uh, for the NES in Japan. And it came to America in 1990 for that same console. Uh, you guys can see uh, the clips right now are of me playing the Final Fantasy 1 version on the PlayStation Origins. Uh, that's how I will also be playing Final Fantasy 2. Um, uh, funny enough, Final Fantasy 1 was the last game uh, that the company had at the time. They put all their chips into one idea, and that was Final Fantasy. Uh, obviously, I don't know about JD, but my favorite Final Fantasy 7. If I had to name yours, would it be Crystal Chronicles? <laughs> the one that almost ended a friendship. So. <laughs> Which one would it be? Uh, Probably, um, uh, probably two. Oh, okay. No, I'm, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm playing it. You're like, uh, okay. Uh, no, my favorite's probably Tactics. Um, not probably, is is very likely uh, Tactics, just because I, I have the most memory. That's the Final Fantasy I've beaten the most out of any other Final Fantasy. And, um, I don't know. I just like that that sort of like story where it's mixed with it. It's got elements of realism, right? Like you're like, oh man, War of the Lions, and then it's also like, hey, um, we got magic, we got you know all these other ideals yeah. that are you know being spouted by these people, and, and the Delita is full of himself, and um, I forget what they changed his name to. Is it Albus? Dumbledore? I, I have no idea. <laughs> No, uh, but it's just that stuff was was very intriguing uh, to me, and I was I was hooked, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, wait, permadeath, and then oh yeah, so and then you could, yeah, it's good. Oh, uh, you could send them. You could like when you are tired of them, or you need to make room for other stronger people. You could send them out, and they're like, are you sure? They'll guilt you. I yeah, thought it was like, oh, man. Sure, fine. I'll keep the chemist on my team for the end game. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I need the potions. Right. You can throw them pretty far. Um, uh, What's well, good? So when we get to tactics, I'm sure JD will have. Uh, tactics is obviously one of my favorites too, but uh, of seven is the is the goaded, which the name Cloud I guess would mislead people. Um, my name's Ron. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, so my Final Fantasy one playthrough. Uh, w was fun. Uh, it took me a little over a month to play. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, how I'm doing this currently is I'm playing it uh, live on Twitch uh, with the emulator on PlayStation. I'm able to two times speed it, 
Um, so for those that were there to watch it live or see clips placed throughout this video, uh, you might see some clips at a two times speed. The reason for that is because I uh, let's get the show on the road kind of thing. Uh, no one wants to see me press the X button 30 times, nor am I doing a speed run. So uh, it helped level up faster. I will not be using any cheat codes. No infinite gill, infinite magic, infinite whatever. So I infinite lives. Infinite. No, thank you. I took infinite L's though. I, dude, I can't <laughs> wait to get into how much, like how difficult this game was for someone like me. Um, so starting off for the quick, um, uh, there were six characters that you could play as. You could play as a warrior, monk, thief, white mage, black mage, or a red mage. Uh, on the screen right now, you can see that I picked a warrior for myself. JD was a monk. I had Aerith as the white mage and Klezik as a red mage. At the time, I didn't remember that you level up your classes. So uh, the white mage becomes a uh, white wizard. A black mage can become a black wizard. Monk becomes a master. Warrior becomes a paladin. Uh, and the red mage becomes a red wizard. I'll tell you what. The red wizard was absolutely hot garbage. Uh... A jack of all trades on paper sounds phenomenal, but the application of it's not good. So I really wish. Also, the monk was good because of the damage output, but I don't. A thief could use more ability. Uh, a monk can't use any ability, so a thief turning into a ninja could have gave me a little bit more like advantages for physical attacking. Which at the end of the game, I did that the most. I honestly uh, physically attacked more than I did did uh, magic. Um, uh, dude, it was it was an incredibly difficult learning curve for me playing Final Fantasy 7 remake and you have Multiple buttons and you can move and dodge this game you 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 have MP But your MP is based on how many times you can use a level spell So if you get cure one, you can only use it once when you level up your uh, Mind you can then use it five times because you've leveled up so you can use level five magic now but like, I'm so used to having, oh, you have 80 MP and Cure 1 casts for 3 MP. Um, that was like one of the, the, the most difficult learning parts is the amount of potions that you have in this game and that you have to use. Like I would walk two steps and have to use potions immediately. Um, <laughs> dude, it, it's... If you stepped on some tacks. I, I don't know what it was about the earth and the three continents trying to murder you, boy, plus the sea, but... You take four steps, you get in a fight. Dungeons, again, I'm synopsis. I'm doing a big synopsis right now, but uh, let me let me get uh, back on a small track. Um, so, how the game starts, right? You pick your classes, and then the four war the four warriors of light appear, right? That's who you are in this game. Uh, you show up with uh, each one as a uh, darkened crystal. Um, we the first place you get to is Cornelia. The games back in the day, if you can imagine NES back in the 19. 1980s there wasn't a specific need for a robust storyline it was more of like the whimsical world of i'm living i'm here i need to do the right thing or i need to go conquest i need to go battle there wasn't you didn't need a specific character driven this is almost like a it's like you're a passive character you have to live this story through these four characters it's not like how you feel now where you pick up cloud and it's like your story passed and and you you pick up his baggage kind of thing um so when you get to cornelia uh, the first thing we got to do is talk to the the king the princess sarah was kidnapped by garland which garland plays a big role at the end of the game um you go across you go across the continent right i'm leveling up everything's fine i'm dying left and right as you can see uh, with my characters uh you go to the chaos shrine uh defeat garland but that's not the last you see of him <gasps> um, yeah, and then uh, once you get back with Sarah I think it was a draw like the king's like I'm not going to make this drawbridge but then the second you bring back Sarah he's like facts build that bridge in two minutes and they got it done in 30 seconds build it yesterday <laughs> you're third <you're> third <laughs> um, so uh, you go past uh, you go over the drawbridge uh, you go to I think the next place was Elfheim um which you hear about a witch named Matoya, which funny enough, Matoya has been, I didn't know, right? I don't remember Final Fantasy 1 that well. So Final Fantasy 1, she, her name's dropped in Final Fantasy 14. Like she's like, she has a whole side mission. So I'm curious to see, do you know if she's in any other games, JD? Um, I know her I brooms, guess, her I'm... dancing brooms might be, but. Oh, well, her dancing brooms might have something to do with a few dungeons in 14. Yeah. 
um, I, I, at the risk of sounding really like, I don't know, full of myself and smart at the same time, I'm not too familiar with Mat uh, Matoya outside yeah. of 14. Yeah. <laughs> like, out, inside of, oh man, dude, you stole her. That's her, that's her uh, mentor. Oh man, they work together. Sensei? <laughs> Sensei? And then you jump over to anything other than 14 they're like oh you know what's all it is yeah that's sure they, yeah you might be right it might only be this game in 14 i can't remember and i definitely wasn't in seven eight nine unless it was a name drop like sid or biggs and wedge yeah she might be in something else but yeah. it's just not like many bells um so when you get to Elfheim, uh you know um uh the witch matoya uh took a crown um, or not took a crown, but put the prince of Elfheim in uh, deep sleep. So you need a jolt. It's like jolt fluid or jolt tonic, I think it was called. Um, but in that town, um, it was like a funny little clip thing on Twitch. But uh, you walk up to like if you're looking at this game again, you're you're traveling town to town. There's no specific direction. You'll get like a, 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 a four sentences of dialogue where it says. I need this in this town south. And then you have to go, okay, I guess I'll go south. And then hope hope to the maker you find it. But um, so you have to talk to some of the townspeople to get the story, right? Like the story is not thrown at you in cutscenes. Uh, the PlayStation 1 version did have a few uh, FMBs, but um, they had uh, the perspective was to talk to characters. So, like, when you get to, uh, when you get to, I forgot the town's name. Um, but it's like Provoca, town Provoca, no the town of no name. You find uh, pirates there, and then you talk to the one person who looks completely different than everyone else. Walk up to him, and he's like, "Yar, are you talking shit, matey?" And then you fight, and then you kick his ass, and he goes, "Yar, have me boat." So like one of the easiest ways. I've never kids that might pay to bully people because you'll get a ship out of it. I don't know, but they're pirates, so I guess it's okay to bully them. Um, so after you get the ship, uh, I, I cannot remember exactly all the traveling that needed to get done, but I remember we had to go to, uh, Mount Dragar, uh, to get the night. You have to get nitro powder to blow up a continent. You literally, literally and figuratively blow up the earth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, the war is the light shred thy land. Um, sure. It's not some, uh. <laughs> Lots of extremist organizations. <laughs> no, the not the wolves. <laughs> like at th at this point, I've only talked about negative. Like they saved Sarah, but they did that out of greed. Like honestly, we could we could flip the script on this and make it sound like we're the enemies. Um, um. So you have to go get the stolen crown. Uh, which I forgot who exactly needed it, but you need to get a, a stolen crown. Um, and then you defeat another wizard named Astos. Uh, the Warriors of Light, they get the crystal and return it to the witch, which she gives you the jolt tonic. That's how that pathway went. And then keep What's that it. Guy's name? Ast <laughs> Astos? Astos? <laughs> it's just, you kick his ass and stuff on his toes. <laughs> <laughs> My only I weakness! Yeah. Um, uh, Matoya makes the gel tonic that awakens the prince. And then, like, in between all this that's going on, again, a retrospect, I'm dying. Every time you go into a dungeon, JD, you were there. Every time you go into a dungeon, like, you have to level up before you go in uh, to any dungeon because you will die. You need 99 potions in your inventory. You need 10 tents to walk because the only way to save in the game is to sleep. You have to sleep to save. There's no save button that exists. Even on the, uh, the Origins port, you have to sleep to save. Um, so like going into each of these dungeons is, is terrifying. Uh, and like the, uh, showing again, but like uh, some else I'm bringing up the revive system. You have to go to church to have an old man with a beard pray to summon two angels to bring that person back to life. Yay. Um, yeah. so once you get the Joltonic, uh, if I remember, okay, the Joltonic. Uh, the prince wakes up, gives you guys the mystic key, which the cool with the mystic key was back in the day, you, there were certain dungeons, uh, that said you cannot progress any further because you need the mystic key. And then you get it and it's like, oh, cool. It's like your first sense of backtracking, right? Which I think is a really cool, I, it's a really cool idea in, in RPGs is like you progress 30% through the game, 
and you're like, man, what are these unlock? I can't progress any further because I need X, Y, Z. Okay, cool. You progress 80%. You finally get that item. You go back. They're completely side quested, but they almost always give you more money, more strength, more weapons, experience, whatever the case may be. Um. Oh, so the Mystic Key, that gets you the Dice Rapata we talked about. That was, you go to Mount Dwargar. Dwergar, uh, blow up the side of the continent. You take the ship, you zoom, uh, right past through. And then I think after you, so after you blow up the part of the, uh, continent, that's when you start going to revive the crystals. The first fiend of earth is what you go to. You fight Lich. Uh, skeleton has got, it looks like he's got thunder around him, but he's responsible for the current earth's rotting, right? So like the point of the, the warriors there was to save sarah like in the beginning because that's the first place you went to but the over encompassing story is to revive the crystals uh to revive the crystals because uh the they've been drained of the energy and the crystals are what keep the earth going um uh the first thing you get uh after you fight lich which was again the boss fights were not that hard for me i never died on one because i was always overpowered always were you overpowered? I was, I was. I was that ice oh, first off, dude, that I, dude. Was it a fire one? The ice, the ice cavern. And funny enough, the ice cavern wasn't even like anything specific towards reviving a crystal. It was, it was just a, 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 go there uh, to get your to get your ass clapped. That's exactly what it was. It was a, you know, like currently we talk about like <laughs> we talk about like DPS checks uh level checks and dude that was not a check that was just a checkmate as soon as you walk in there it is a a absolute wrap um uh i think after that was uh you enter the volcano where you defeat marlith which is the i think she has six hands i might be wrong but uh flame snake waifu um which according to the lore she was awakened 200 years prematurely because Lich was defeated, which uh, the storyline is, it's slightly hard to grasp. Uh, you have to talk to all the townspeople, you gotta, you have to talk to all the townspeople, that's like how the lore is, it's like opposite of uh, Dark Souls, where you read the equipment and, and dialogue. No, here you just read the, uh, the, the townspeople's conversations. Um, uh, after that, you get the, after that, you get the airship, and then after that, you, um, I keep saying after that, after that, and then, and then, and then, uh, you get, you have to go, you have to go. So the airship, once you get the airship and we talked about, uh, the ice cavern, that's when the ice cavern happens. I don't think I could ever really forget. I had to research my video to look at where it happened exactly but once you get the airship that's when you that's when you get clapped or it's right before where when you clap by the ice cavern the ice cavern was the worst thing possible like in the game you have four warriors of light fighting seven to at minimum eight uh wizards uh, trolls that can cast aoe ice damage that do over a hundred and it's like i uh, there's only four of me man and you can't escape from them you have to fight them so and by escape from them, you just had to reset your console. So I would, I would, Alt F4 uh, my game every time that happened. Um, so after that, you go to Bahamut, who you got to go do this whole trial thing in the sky, and then guess what? You need to bring back to prove your worth to the Dragon King, a rat's tail. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say a mega flare. <laughs> no, no, you'd expect like I need you to bring back the four crystals combined as one. And the the soul of the unborn demon. Excalibur too. While you're at it, <laughs> I'll door dash you. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you need a rat's tail. Um, and then at, off of some some peasants. <laughs> so, will this do? Uh, that's fine. <laughs> um, I use it to floss. So after Bahamut, after you give him the rat tail, he's like, "All right, bet. Let me just upgrade your guys' classes." Uh, so uh, obviously more stats come up, right? The uh, warrior becomes a paladin my red wizard became a red mage I'm, so, I'm sorry red mage became a red wizard white mage became a white wizard and my monk became a master um the monk the entire playthrough never needs a weapon because he needs fists he need them he need them he throw them bows like his whole entire his playlist on life is nothing but ludicrous is throw them bows <laughs> i just 
so so uh, we did talk about it. I don't think we went into too much detail about it. So you're you're the warrior, the warrior. So you're the warrior of life. And as far as formation goes, I'm all the way at the bottom, right? As the monk. So, uh, whoever died, was always at the bottom. The okay. most, which was the red mage. I just assumed I was in our formation. I was at the the bottom on the opposite side of you. So like you're on your side. You're like, all right, team. Yeah, team yeah. You hear the background just. I am the best. <laughs> it's just in the, the. Check out my vest. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, don't go in yet. <laughs> you, dude, you were at glass cannon the whole playthrough, man. You hit hard. I would, I again, as the as the paladin, I got to, I had the fortunate, uh, the privilege of using uh, swords, and you were like, God gave me these, and they're powerful enough. I think you ended the game. You ended the game uh, right next to me uh, when we fought chaos. Um, so uh, we upgraded. Oh, you upgrade your job classes, right? And again, the red wizard was just a. It was just a bad. I, it was nice to have extra cures, but like, and it was okay. I just started using them to only attack. Like, if the boss was weak against a certain element, I would still use a uh, physical. Um, after that, so we've had the, so the earth crystals refilled. Uh, along with the fire crystal and then after that was the water crystal where we had to go underwater after talking to mermaids and then we fight the kraken um, which revives our water and then the last one was uh, Tiamat Tiamat for uh, uh, was yeah yeah was the fiend to win uh, that's uh, after the after you go underwater you go all the way back up in the flying fortress um so right, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them been defeated. The crystal's been restored. Uh, no, now what do we do? Uh, so once the once all the four crystals have been revived, uh, there was a uh, an entity that absorbed the four crystals uh, through a time portal at the Chaos Shrine, which we talked about Garland in the beginning of the game. Um, when that Chaos Shrine was that first part. Um, so you go back to the beginning of the game, which again is poetic, right? Poetic. It's very cool that the second, uh, technically the second place, because you go to Cornelia first, the second place you visit is literally the end of the game. Um, and this is where it gets kind of confusing. Again, it's like direct dialogue, but it's uh, uh, you go through the shrine, you travel 2,000 years in the past, and you meet the uh, the four arc demons, uh, arc fiends, I think is what they're referred to as, uh, and they created chaos. Uh, they, the warrior lights defeated chaos, but then the arch fiends sent Garland into the future to bring Garland back in the past. What? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I don't, I don't have the exact memory, but you, you literally travel back to defeat because they put it, they traveled forward. Um, as I say that, my brain explodes, and the Final Fantasy theme is just playing. Um, they used the uh, uh, so Chaos turns out to be Garland, who was not killed, br brought back into the past by the Four Fiends. That stolen energy that after you revive the crystals, that's how Garland becomes Chaos. Garland created a time loop to live forever. That's like, that's the story. You set on this quest. You have these four. Again, the beginning, I, I, there, there's a, I don't think the game explicitly states how you walked out of a forest and you're like, we're the chosen ones. However, that's what it is. It's just, it's just four conceited people that got together. This is about us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. They're, yeah, you know what? They describe the the enemies as fiends, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, what are you gonna be? Man, I'm a I'm a white mage. What does that do? I don't know. Heal. <laughs> <laughs> so the the other cool part of this, again, I'll play this on the origins version, is that uh, once you defeat chaos, right? Uh, really cool. It's a cool boss fight. You're on a platform. It's in space and time. The boss kind of is like leaning back. He's hitting that fat Joe. Um, but having, so once you defeat him, you break the time loop, peace returns. Uh, everyone is unaware and the warriors of light themselves do not recall their adventure. 
So like you play through this, and then like this final, it's a Final Fantasy. It turns into a time warp, and then the Warriors of Light themselves are like, "What did we, like literally? What did we do?" They don't remember doing their adventure. So, some might say we talked about this in chat slightly, but some might say that that's again Final Fantasy One in itself is an infinite loop, because the ending of Final Fantasy One might imply that like oh we forgot but we have like it doesn't and it doesn't say they dropped the crystals on the floor they shattered in a million pieces so it's like they restarted in the same spot over and over for all eternity <laughs> so like so again the game was a lot of the game was fun um for i'm trying to keep in my mind that the game came out years ago it was square's last ditch effort to stay afloat as a company Obviously, very successful. They're on they're on Final Fantasy 15, working on 16. But one of my favorite game series, Final Fantasy 7, changed my life. I hated Final Fantasy one though. I don't know if it was a player curve. Again, I, I can appreciate it for what it is, which is why I can like it. But the difficulty spike was incredible. Um, I feel like I'm okay with grinding. I feel like I'm okay, but the level of Going into a dungeon knowing I have to flee from every fight isn't fun for me. Just is not fun. I don't... Uh, Final Fantasy 4, right? My first my first video game I ever played was Final Fantasy 4. I don't remember going into a dungeon going, Ugh, I gotta run away from every fight. You have to use a potion and run away from every single fight in a dungeon. If you were to take your four warriors of light and try to beat the dungeon, it wouldn't happen. There's no way. You cannot fight every enemy. You have to run away. You have to. Also, I played on the normal version on my playthrough, which is the like the preferred original packaged version, and it, it is it's difficult. I this game wanted I wanted to use cheat codes. Hashtag blessed. I was using two times speed to level up a little bit faster, but that damn red mage was sabotaging me the whole entire way. Man, he was a real. That was Garland. I should name his ass Garland. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I, I did. Actually, I did. Um, my, my chat was asking, asking me like, oh, you know, the class change is going to come up soon. Um, and they even said at the beginning, well, hey, do you know, Red Mage can't use the final, like can't use flare, can't use holy. And I was like, ah, oh, well, I played the GBA version, Dawn of Souls back when, you know, a de over a decade ago, but I don't remember it. Um, and I played it on the easy mode, I'm sure. Uh, but I almost did. I almost. I when I didn't realize there was a ninja in the class. And for all my Naruto fans, your boy loves Naruto. And if I can be a ninja, I'm gonna be a ninja. Um. Over. Oh, yeah. Oh. Overall, man. I, I. I. It was a very fun game. Uh, it was a very fun game. I just the difficulty spike was. It's like if I were to play Ninja Gaiden, or like I were to play. Uh, another uh, Castlevania like some of these old school games just have that it's so simplistic in its curve of difficulty but it spikes really high like this game rewards you for grinding over and over and over and over and over and over but you also have to have money to buy potions but you get that from grinding but then when you go into uh, when you go into one of these damn ice caverns the ice cavern was the bane of my existence dude the ice cavern almost made me stop streaming that day Almost. That's a that was a rough that was a rough watch. Dude, yeah, like uh, again, like thinking about and the graphics look so much better on the Origins version, but like I wish I could have been there in that moment uh, when the and I was born in '88, um, so I can't envision what it was like to play Final Fantasy, opening it up, playing it on an NES for the first time because I got into f games at Final Fantasy IV, not when it was released, but. Um, it was a great game. Uh, it's a good. I think it's a good, a really good. Obviously, pun intended. A good starting point for this Final Fantasy Gauntlet for myself because it, it really set the tone, man. It's. It, I had to grind off stream, right? Uh, I want to play it on stream only, but I have to grind off stream because the amount of back and forth of leveling and buying new gear and buying potions and treading forward and and guides weren't even made back then to to look at the stuff you know shout, shout outs to nintendo power for keeping po people's sanity because like i said the, you're really not given a lot of direction in these games you know like it, it doesn't say go get the nitro powder here it'll say go talk to the go talk to the elves 
uh, go talk to the Elf King, and then you go to the Elf King, and the Elf King's fast asleep, wake your ass up. But he won't, but you gotta get the Jolt Tonic. But how do you know the, the Matoya is gonna make the Jolt Tonic if you get her a crystal? Like, it, it's this old school, you know, send send to retrieve and deliver concept of like, just when you think you're getting to the next part, you have to do some other side task. Um. I don't know how I I don't think I could rank the game. Not that I was asked, but it was it's just the, ga the game. <laughs> rate the game. Uh, rate the one out of five. Um, now that I'm playing Final Fantasy two, I have I have more appreciation for Final Fantasy two because it's it doesn't feel as difficult. Which we'll get into that video whenever we finish uh, playing it. But um, for the first Final Fantasy, man, they really they put all their hopes and dreams in this game, man, and I, I value and appreciate them for. For, for doing all that they could because they gave me probably my favorite game series. Honestly, my favorite game series. I mean, you saw, you saw a couple of the, a couple of the streams, JD. How'd you feel about the game? <laughs> Not enthused. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was watching that and I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Man came in with a hundred potions. He's in the second room and he needs to leave. <laughs> that is ex that is exactly how the game works. And and no, I didn't play the game wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's a balancing issue. You know, it's their first foray into this style of uh, genre, so it's it's like you know, hey, we want them to really feel like they're on an adventure. <laughs> like, no, oh, that's more than an adventure. That's torture. Yeah, uh, people are getting freaking wrecked like oh man that's that sucks uh i mean honestly you know i can't rate the game because i never played it but um i can definitely say i would not enjoy playing that game yeah <laughs> i'd probably be cursing it i'm hopefully playing on a handheld yeah yeah i don't think i i think without two times speed i honestly don't think i'd be as enthused i think if i played it at, at its organic state like some of these speed like uh, most speedrunners do or completionists like i don't know man i don't think i could um so i don't want to leave that on a sad note like oh this game's terrible but it, it's just the difficulty spike is again if you prepare for if you prepare for the adventure it's not that hard right but i'm telling you you show me a playthrough that isn't hacked that you can walk through all the dungeons and fight every enemy and still make it to the boss with four cures left and beat them. Um, so I think that's going to end this video. Uh, again, the Final Fantasy Gauntlet will be played through. I have no time frame. I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video. I have no time frame when, on when I need to get this done. It doesn't need to be a year. It could be two years. The intent is that every Sunday, typically around 1 p.m., uh, PST on Twitch, I will be playing through a Final Fantasy. I again, we are already a little bit more than we're almost halfway to Final Fantasy 2 uh, currently as of recording this video. Um, when that video, when that video game gets beat, uh, we'll move on to three. We'll make another video for two. Again, these are more logs, kind of like just a talking point for me to look back on. Um, shout out to you, boy JD, for the editing, um, for hanging out with me, hanging in the streams, supporting. Um, and thank you guys for watching and remember it's not our final fantasy.